Hey everyone, it's Ellen, and today we're going to paint the easiest flower on the planet, an aster. It's very simple, with two simple brushes, a couple of simple colors, so let's get started. Okay, as always, I'll start out by going over supplies that I have, and I always leave them in the description box below, so please check that out um, if you're not understanding what I'm saying. I have a piece of Arches 100% cotton paper, 7 by 9, a uh, 7 by 10 inch piece. I have my paints. I'll be using Cadmium Yellow Deep, Bright Rose, and Peacock Blue. My water jars, paper towels. I actually put this on a um, just a cheap old cardboard piece, basically left over from paper that, a paper pad that's empty. Um, this is the easiest flower to paint. I did a little couple of um, different strokes just to show you. Like this was these ones were used by painting with the Long Round Princeton. Velvet Chet Series brush, just going like this. But then you know you're pushing down and you're getting a little fatter um, petals. But you might want that. You might want that look. And that is the Princeton brush. If you don't have something like that, and you have a shorter, fatter brush like this, you can still achieve it. You can still just take the paint and just move it like this. Just be conscious of not hitting pushing down too much so you're getting like a bigger fatter um, petal in the end and then I have this little s perfect little brush for this this is a uh, Robert Simmons um, with the SN65 round number two brush from a Sienna series it's perfect it will make the perfect you see like this I'll grab my peacock blue and I mix it with my bright rose and I get the perfect purple if you want to make purple instead of buying purple, it's the easiest thing is to have a bright blue and a bright pink. So, and look at that. It makes the perfect aster petals every time. Because it's that shape, it's that size. I did a bunch over here. Look at how simple it is. So if you have something small like this, this is great. Now, I would use this only for the flower part. I don't think I'd necessarily use it for the the stem and the leaves but you know you play around and I've decided by playing around two different ways some people might put in the center first well that's great if you've drawn out and you plan where your flowers are go but sometimes I don't like to do that I like to just go haphazardly so I would just place the flowers first and I will show you in my tutorial although I did sketch out kind of how I want them to go because I kind of want to have them branched like like this but let me tell you guys this is the easiest flower to paint I'm not kidding so I did sketch out um, just some branches basic random branches just like this and you could do the same uh, grab a piece of paper here I'll just show you oh, he hasn't even an envelope you're just drawing random branches how you want it to look and then you can put the circle where you think the aster would go and then from there you paint it and as you're painting it you might say I don't like it there you know you yet even though you have drawn it out you might not feel like as you're painting the flowers that you don't like the placement when you might want to add some more again though it's so simple to do just the simplest flower to paint and I will show you so I told you I've mixed the peacock with the yellow I mean excuse me the bright uh, rose and I'll take my little skinny brush and sometimes if I have excess paint on it, I'll dab it on a paper towel. But you want this consistency of paint to be fairly loose and wet. Because I want a lighter color. And at the same time, you should have a color over here that's mixed already. There's the peacock blue and the bright rose. That's fairly creamy. Very little water. And I'll explain to you as I go why. So clean up my brush. Again, I grab this paint. It's pretty wet. I always like to dab it if it's too much extra paint because it can make a big mess. And we're just going to make those simple strokes. Simple strokes are simple folks. And here we go. See? You're just pulling these strokes. You don't need to draw it. And like we're doing these haphazardly. We're kind of meeting them. Some are going this way and that way. And that's kind of how a flower looks. You don't see flowers perfect little petals all together and I'll show you this is going to be kind of a side type of view so you're getting a little shorter 
and the front just like that little short petals they're four sh foreshadowed petals and the bigger ones in the back it is this simple I'm not kidding so I drew a little oval here I'll probably put another aster here to the same thing you're kind of going around just like that and why I told you to mix that paint um, I have it on the side I will show you right now this makes the perfect this brush makes the perfect um, petals so I'm grabbing some of that darker paint and I'm just gonna tap it in what I mean with tapping just in the ends I might want to put a little water to it because it's a little too dark and you're just tapping on the ends towards the center this gives you a more well-rounded and natural look of the flower and you can even put a few darker petals underneath in some of them they might bleed if it's not dry so if it's dry it won't bleed but again you're going to just go in here on the same petals that you put down just on the edge going towards the center and it creates that beautiful vibrant like three-dimensional look and again I like I said I've drawn out haphazardly um, where I want my asters to go you can just use a couple I mean it's such an easy flower you literally could be talking on the phone chit-chatting with a friend about what's going on in your life and painting these it's like a doodle almost it's not even funny see you just go through all these little areas that I painted I mean excuse me I drew up and I go back in I want to make this bigger and you can make them the see I made them smaller and some are really big you can make them bigger or smaller because they may be bloomed or half bloomed and I'll show you a half bloomed and you know and go back in and grab this darker color and like I said just tapping it in towards the center on those petals it's so easy to make this pretty little purple flower <clears throat> so they, they come in other colors too they come in white and pink and um, I have these purple ones on the side of my yard in the front they usually come out like late August September so we want to make um, I'll just throw in a unopened one and basically just swooping here swooping leaving a little white space in between and that's it and again you can go back and take your darker color and just hit the bottom part of that and that's it and we'll add the greenery and the stem to that so you're going to go through all the areas that you want um, their aster to go into and I'm randomly going to stick them all in here I just like I said I drew out a stem and I connected them and what I mean by that I think I showed you how the stems connect if you see them like you know if you have um, if you have black-eyed Susans you'll see what I'm saying they're not just one stock flower that's a stem that branches off and the flowers are on that so that's what I drew out and then you can crisscross it to make it look more natural like I said what I mean by that is you have your aster it's on a branch with another one come down here it's on a branch it's not a single flower like that so the branch like that and then you'll have the leaves like this and they are connected so you have one connected to that and then you can have one separately because it's a bush usually and that's how it looks and that's kind of what I'm drawing right now I'm painting I'll have my leaves painted like that very very simple you guys can totally do that I mean you guys probably doodle in your book when you're a kid drawing little daisies it's the same thing but just put your brush and actually it's faster and easier so you've got that loose loose paint up here and you're just pushing down the brush leaving white spaces in between and creating that curvature and some of these see I'm curving the petals as they're going towards the center and I'm leaving a nice circle 
When that dries, I will add the yellow center. Again, here we go again. Just going to keep filling this in. And I'll add the, the stems and leaves in a bit. So simple to do. Um, these ones I could do a little shorter center. I might want to make a bigger one like this one. Just because um, it's easier to fill in. And it, it can do a half one. So a half one would be um, like a half get the flowers here and then the flowers here. So I'll show you how to paint that. So we're going to paint the half the half one. Foreshadowing little sh short strokes in the front, longer ones in the back. It can overlap the other one. There are no mistakes when painting. Some of the best things you think are mistakes are not mistakes. So see how it's kind of like a half circle going in and adding that. Ooh, that was a little shock. Um, darker tone. I didn't add it up here when it was drying. I can just go in later on. No problem. It just puts them in. You can also just go paint over it too. Just like I said, this is just like a monotonous activity to paint and easily created sitting around, you know, if you're bored and you want something to do and you don't want to be stressed out anymore. This is almost like therapy. See him going around. And now I'm going to show you with the See, I'm just doing these little strokes in the front. And then it looks like a more natural half flower. With the same brush I can still use, um, I have a Cabin Yellow Deep. I want to put a tinge of green in there. And I made the green with the Cabin Yellow Deep in the Peacock Blue. So it's like a yellow green center. And I'll just fill that in. I could leave a little halo if I wanted to also just gives it another dimension of realism. See this little white halo? I'm not painting the whole entire thing in. Zoom it in. And the little white part. And as you get towards the edges, we want to have a little greenish tone. So I have this light green here that I painted up. You can just tap it in on the edges. It's a little dry. And add some more of that yellow and touch of the peacock blue. Whoop, too much. Just one a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to tap that in, little teeny taps all along the edge. I would do more on one side than the other. I could do a few on one side, but more on one side. Again, it gives it a three dimensional realistic look. See, we just tap that color in. You can also add a little brown to make it a deeper yellow. I have a Van Dyke brown here. And just do the same thing. If you want to just punch it up even more. Go ahead and add that. Just a little bit. Very simple to do. Um, for the leaves, I might definitely want to grab my Princeton 8 long round brush because it's so simple to make leaves with. You have that skinny long belly, you have the nice point to it, and it just creates the simplest leaves. So that, that first brush is so simple for the petals, and this one's going to really make the leaves easy. So I grab that peacock blue, and I grab my yellow, and I make that nice green. It's a nice bright green. I can add a little bit of the brown just to dull it a little bit, or a little bit of red. So you can add a little bit of the rose, and that will dull it down just a bit. Get it fairly loose, not super loose. Gonna grab some more paint. Okay, so I have it on my belly of my brush, I'm twisting it like that. And I'll tap it just so the tip is like, not full of tons of paint. 
And this is where I'm going to bring down my stem, like you see here. And my stem. And my stem's connecting. And this one's connecting. This one's connected to a different one. So I'll have this one. I even drew over here, but I'm changing it. See, connecting that one. I'm probably going to add an aster over here. So I'll put that in there, connect it. Again, connecting. And I'll have one here connecting. And that's what you're just doing. You're just connecting the leaves. And then you, the leaves are so simple. You use the tip. You're pushing down and pulling down and pulling up. So that's a little too dry. I'm going to add some more water. Boom. There's your leaf. Right? Another one here. Just going to bend it and pull it in. Wiggle it and pull it in. With this brush, you're just pushing down. And then wiggle it, pull it down. Use these kind of brushes to your advantage. It's got that belly and the tip. You see that? It's pretty simple. I like the tip because it's nice and pointy. You can make all these little leaves. So you're just pushing it up here, a simple leaf. Very simple and starting to come to life, right? Um, of course, I always mention this, you want not to have one flat green color. Uh, I might go in and add a little more of this peacock blue and the Van Dyke brown. And get a deeper green, grab some yellow. And you can dull it down with the with the bright rose, whatever colors you have. So it's a little darker. I'm going to get darker towards the aster. Put that dark color in there. Looks like shadow. And darker towards the stem area where it meets. And you can put it on the tip of the leaf. And you can put the darker in between. Or if you painted it where it's light like this, and then you add the dark on each side, but leaving the light in the middle for like the, the line for the leaf. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. So I like to have a variety of greens and they see a variety of purples. And we're just gonna keep playing around with adding more of these flowers. So now that I see them, I'm like, oh, well, it feels like it's a little empty here or it's fine the way it is. I can crisscross another whole entire, get this wet, stem for more flowers, feeling that it was not enough. And then I can add them, as you will see in a minute. So that's what I mean by intuitive painting. You kind of have a plan, but then you go along and you're like, nah. I don't like that plan. I want a different plan. And that's the beauty. And here's the um, bud. And we're just going to put the green stem down and then kind of kind of hover around the bud, just like that. And maybe put a little ones that are wisping out so you know it's a little bud. And he's hanging off that one. It's such a pretty simple flower to paint. So like I said, I got my stem. I can go back in now and add you know if you want to envision where the circle will go you can go like just draw it in but you're kind of used to it right you can just put that paint in there and go around and fill it in just like we did before listen if some of your purples are a little more pinker and bluer that's perfectly fine too it's a variety it's pretty it's more for your eye to look at. In some ways it's so much better. You want to have visual interest um, painting. You don't just paint the paint. You want to have it something unique and different. So again, we'll add in, this gets right up, the darker tone. We're going to just tap that in. I say tapping it in. Other people might call it something else. I try to keep things very simple, hence why this is like the simplest flower. Get 
again, just going to tap in some dark oak tone. And I'm just going to keep creating and keep doing that until you fill the page where you want it to be. So there you have it. I filled in some more of those flowers. I added the yellow like I showed you before with the little green on the edge and a teeny bit of the Van Dyke Brown. And I've gone in and added some more um, buds and just filling in with the leaves all over. And I'll just tweak it a little bit here and there. But this is so easy, guys. You can do it. Simple brushes, simple colors. It creates a very pretty, simple floral look nice anywhere in any room so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to check out my exclusive videos on patreon i do them weekly with exclusive traceables um i also have that ac acrylic channel called amazing art it's uh in the description box and also on my home page i'm doing a lot of fun abstract acrylic demos over there so go check that out thank you so much for stopping by and take care i'll speak to you soon